So this is uh, within the IT Technical Forum. We have started a series of uh, that we call the Casual Config Fridays, so that you get the best practices and ideas for the from the configuration management experts. So today we have David Moreno, who is going to talk about uh, Hiera. Um, I give him the floor. Cool. Thank you. So yeah, my name is. Uh, David, or David, or however you want to call me, it's okay. So I welcome you to the first session of Casual Config Fridays. And we are starting, we are going to start uh, talking about uh, what it is and what uh, we want to achieve with this. This is going to be a series of seminars in, in the topic, on the topic of configuration. So we pretend to give you some advices of how to configure your, your machines, best practices, how to do it properly, features that uh, we are going to see that they are new. For example, today we are going to see some of them that are quite new. And we want to more or less uh, do a talk every month. We'll see about that. Uh, but we can say that the next one is going to be on October 12th. And the good thing about this is that we, we know more or less what uh, we want to, to talk about. Probably it's going to be templates or stdlib, something like that. But if you want uh, to talk about, if you want us to talk about something specific, uh, we are open to do it. Uh, another comment about the CCF is that CCF is going to be a bit more elaborate, it's going to be a bit more higher level, but we still have the config training. The config training is part of the IE tools training in which uh, you can find information about uh, cloud services, about monitoring, and specifically our part, we review it completely. It's completely new. So you're going to find not only new content, better content is more dynamic if you haven't done it yet, or if you've done it uh, like long ago, it's a good moment to go. So today, today we are going to talk about Hyra. This is going to be the first topic for CCF. And one of the things that we want to start mentioning and it's something that uh, like 99% of the people say it wrong, is that they say Hira. It's Hira, not Hira, it's not Yera, it's Hira. And this is said by the, the own developers of Puppet, so it's not me, it's Hira. Okay, so now that we know how to pronounce it, we are going to talk about what it is. Hira is, uh, as you can see, there is, uh, there is a key value, a stored abstraction based in YAML files. It's based in YAML files, so what is going to allow us is to separate data from the code, from the manifest, and it's going to, it's going to allow us to, to have um, more reusable code. For doing this, we're going to have a hierarchy that we defined, but uh, as we are going to see later, you also can define in the modules, in which uh, we are going to set uh, priorities for all the information. And it's going to allow us to perform lookup. It's going to allow us to perform lookups of the data. So, given a key, we are going to get values for that key. And finally, it's going to allow us to specify different mechanisms for doing data composition. And not only that, it's going to allow us to overwrite data. A very basic example of a Hira file will be this one that we can see in the slide. In this case, we are defining um, the YAML, the YAML file, the data for the top level punch, top level host group punch, and the sub host group puppet PS. We are defining three different keys. Very simple. The first two ones are just an array. This is the format for defining arrays. And the second one is going to be an string. This will be, hello Jessica. This will be the, the basic of, of Hira. And now we are going to advance a bit more. The next uh, key concept of, of Hira and that's the, the reason that is called Hira, is because it's coming from hierarchy, is the, the, the priority for the data, is the hierarchy itself. This part that we are, we are going to talk about, I'm going to talk about, is the, the global layer. There are different layers, this will be the main one, and this specific part of this layer is the one that users can alter. So from most specific to least specific, you are going to find that Obviously, the most specific information about a node is the node itself. You have the fully qualified domain name, what you can assign data for a specific node. Obviously, you can specify data for sub-host groups. For example, the one that we saw before, PS. You, you have the ability to target the host group and the combination with host group and environment, and also the combination of host group and operating system. And finally, the, the last on the line, it could be in the top-level host group. 
in our case would be punch or bi or whatever is your host group the second part of this hierarchy is the one that we can show here and it's the one that mostly the config team maintains in this case we have uh, different levels the first one is the data center so um, for a node that is in Megan, we can set a specific data that is going to be different for Bignar. And we have the operating system, an environment and module that we will talk about uh, more later about them because this specific part is a hash, a hack that uh, we implemented here. We will mention it later. And the module that, as uh, you can imagine, we are going to talk about it later also. Finally, we have the hardware vendor and the common data. The common data is going to be applied by default to all the nodes, unless it's overridden in any other part of the hierarchy. So we know now uh, how to define the data, how more or less the hierarchy works. We're going to talk about how to get our data, how we are going to fetch all this information that we defined. There are two ways, okay? The one in the left is the, and the pretty one, is the one that we want you to use. And it's called automatic lookup class parameter, automatic class parameter lookup, or APL. This uh, specific lookup works uh, every single time that uh, we don't define uh, any parameter, any parameter explicit, explicitly when we include a class. It's going to get information for Hira, and it's going to set it. Okay? This is automatic. And the reason we want you to use it is because it's cleaner. It allows you to overwrite. It's well documented. In the other side, there are going to be cases that you want to use explicit lookups. This could be a lookup function. The, the main advantage of this, actually, not really. You, you should use automatic lookup. But this can allow you also to set different behaviors. For example, it's going to allow you to set up a validation for the data. So if you want to get an string, you can say, I want to get an string. And if it's not an string, I want you to break. It's going to allow us to also define strategies. We will mention about what it is later. And also uh, default values, like in, uh, in the Hira function that probably you know already. OK? So two examples, because I know that it's a bit more complex. The first one, automatic class parameter lookup, APL. In this case, two different files. The first one is a host group, specifically the backend sub host group. And we are including jump, the model jump. In the module jump, we are going to see that uh, the class have different parameters. Specifically, we have the one that is called clean all kernels, and it's set to true. As we are not declaring explicitly what we want to be the value for this um, parameter, by default, will be true. But in this case, we are setting a higher file that is matching in the top level and in the subhost group for this one. And we are setting specifically that we want the value to be false. Okay, so it's going to be overridden because every single data that is defined in Hira, it has more priority than any default that you're going to find in, in a code. The second example could be for lookup. More or less is the same. We are going to have a, a Hira file at the bottom where we are defining two variables. In this case, they are not fully qualified. It's just the name of a variable. We have the backend port and we have the backend URL. And we have in the top part, we have the code for the front-end subhost group. We are doing two lookups. The first one, we only specify the key. It's the backend URL. In the second one, we have the ability to set the key and a hash. This hash is saying that we want to have a default value, in this case, 80. And we also want to match using the first strategy. So a strategy is a concept that probably most of you probably don't know. And these are the four strategies that comes with Hira. The first one of, of all of them is called first, it's a name. And this strategy is only going to return the first value when you perform a lookup. And the first value is going to be the one in the top of the hierarchy that we defined. So every single time that uh, we want to search for a key, it's going to go through the hierarchy. And the moment that it finds a value, it stops, nothing else. But we are going to have different cases in which we are going to have the same key in different places of the hierarchy. In those cases, we have three different strategies. The first one is unique, and it was commonly called array merge in previous version of Hira. This strategy is going to combine arrays, and it's going to combine scalars, scalars being strings or integers, for example. 
if it finds a different thing, like it could be a has, it's going to break. It's only allowing a rise and a scalars. And the result is going to be a flattened array with all the values found in all the hierarchy. The last two uh, strategies are specifically implemented for deal with hashes. And that just a, a very simple difference. The first one, has merge, is going to merge all the hashes, all the keys and values in the hashes that finds in the hierarchy, but only the first level. It's not going to go deeper in the, in the hierarchy, in the, in, the, in the children. The second one, deep, is going to be recursive. So it's going to go inside and match all the keys and values. Again, this is very complex. So we prepared four examples, and we are going to start with the first strategy. We defined a very simple hierarchy. Two files, uh, location, PDX, YAML, and common YAML. The hierarchy is the one that uh, is on. The one with more priority is the one on the top. The other one is the one with less priority. And as you can see, we have the same key defined two, two times. The first one is profile server time servers, it's an string. The second one is an array. When we do, we perform a lookup using this line and specifying that we want to, say, to use the, the first strategy. It's going to return just the first value because it's the one with more priority and it's going to stop. It's not going to deal with any other values. The second strategy, unique strategy, is we are using the same files, again, the, the string and the array, but in this case, it's going to go deeper. It's going to go through all the levels of the hierarchy, getting all the, the contents, and returning a, what you can see on the bottom is a, an array, a flattened array, with all the values. As a more complex uh, example, hashes. We are defining two hashes here. Again, priority, this is uh, the one on the left is the one with more priority. The one on the right, common, is the one with less. These hashes have different levels, have children, have Bob, Jim, us, and Bob. And we are specifying that we want a hash merge. Okay? The result of this merge is going to get the value for us, as son in common. It's going to get the value for Jim. There are nothing in common with the files, so it's going to just put it there. But in the case of Bob, as you can see, it's only adding the group, as shown here, and the UID. It's forgetting about the cell, defining common, and also it's forgetting about the value for UID. This is because hash merge doesn't go deeper in the, in, the, in the children, only gets the value of the one with more priority, nothing else. If we want to match those children, we have deep. Same content, different behavior. So in this case, Bob, as you can see, already know that I has cell, bin bus, that is coming from Bob, from common. But we can see that the UID hasn't changed. UID is present in both of them. It's in both files. You have UID 1000 in OPS, and you have UID 501 in the common file. When the same key is found in different files, it's going to get, again, the one with more priority, always. So the one with more priority will be 1,000. By the way, if you have any questions, ask, stop me, because if not, I'm going to continue. Wait, which one is the default strategy? The default is first. first. Yes, always. So, yeah, I don't specify anything. If you don't specify anything, it's going to be first. Yes. And the one with more priority is defining the hierarchy, the one that we saw before. So uh, that hierarchy is defining all the puppet servers. And you can see it also in the IDM machines. It's a Hira YAML file. And it's going to go from top to bottom. The one on the top is going to be the one that we saw before. It's the FQDN. Uh, one of them is also the sub-host groups. That will be the case for groups OPS. And one lower level is going to be common. It's the, the last level. So that's why it's defined this way. Okay. Can you override or redefine the hierarchy of the hierarchies? Uh, the hierarchy can be override, can't, cannot. But we are going to see how to define different hierarchies later. Okay. So now we have a comment. And this is a very important comment. That's the exclamation for. <laughs> there are four functions that are deprecated. Okay. And those are the ones that are here. It's Hyda, Hyda Ray, Hyda Has, and Hyda Include. And as you can see, they are being used quite a lot. These functions are, are going to disappear. It's as simple as that. They are going to disappear in Puppet 6. We are currently in Puppet 4, soon Puppet 5, likely. 
Um, but the sooner uh, you remove this, the better. And it's very important in cases, for example, of Hydahas. Hydahas will be the one that has to disappear as soon as possible. And there are like um, 200 uses of them. And the reason is because the behavior is quite different sometimes. By default, it's performing a, a hash merge. But in the case that it's going to find a Hydra 3 version file, it's going to act a bit different, and it's going to use a deep strategy. That is very confusing and can cause some problems when you execute the code. So again, Hydra, Hydra Ray, Hydra Has, Hydra Include, as soon as you can, out. And you can replace it with Lookup, or mm, better, even better with APL, the automatic, the automatic one. OK. Until the moment, uh, we have seen how to define data. Uh, we have been defining values that are very static. Static. We have uh, used arrays. We have used uh, strings. But there is another thing that we can use, and it's the uh, interpolation of values. Interpolation of values can come in two different ways. The first of it is interpolation variables. And for doing that, we have two different, uh, four different sources. The most simple one, and it's the uh, one that probably you are using already, is uh, the interpolation of puppet variables. You can define a puppet variable in a manifest, OK? And then in Hydra, you can create a new key, bin the value a puppet variable. We're going to see how to do it later. We have another source that is the facts has. At any moment, you can get the fact of a node, for example, um, let's say the domain name of a node, and you can use it for, generate, for generating a, a new key in, in Hydra. And one that is very important, actually I discovered recently, is that you have trusted has. And why is trusted? It's trusted because the other ones, you can overwrite them. With a trusted has, you can. All the values for a trusted has, they are coming for, from the certificate. So you're going to find things like uh, if it's authenticated, you can, you're going to find the host name, and things like that. All the information that you can find in the certificate. So obviously, that certificate is arriving to the master, and no one is going to override it. So we can say that it's accurate. And finally, you can see that there is one that is dimmed. Uh, this is a server facts. And the reason that it's like that is because it's disabled by default in our version. But it's going to be enabled in the next one. Server facts is going to contain information, uh, very little information, actually, about the server that is compiling your catalog, okay, the Puppet server. So in this example, you can see the first three of them, the ones that, the ones that are enabled, actually. For defining an interpolation, you are going to declare a string with a percent sign. And between brackets, you are going to put whatever you want. In this case, in the first example, you have server name that is a variable name. It's coming from Puppet. It's going to be declared in the same scope, but in a Puppet manifest. The second example. <coughs> is using uh, something more complex because it's concatenating the mail string with a value. And that value is coming from a fact. It's, in this case, it's the domain name for the network. And what it's going to generate at the end is mail.thern.ch. And the last example using the, this uh, has that I mentioned before, the trusted has, is just using the host name. And we can say that this is accurate because, again, it's coming from the certificate. Sorry, one question. Isn't the hostname in the certificate already uh, being an FQDM, so with uh, the domain as well, that's on that CH? Uh, you mean in this one? No, no, the last one. Yes. The trusted hostname. That's in the already contained the domain inside, that's on um, that CH. It's possible? It's possible, yes. Yeah, because usually the certificate is for the <laughs> FQDM. You got me. It's, it's possible, yes. I'm not sure right now, but uh, yes, could be. Um, OK. So moving to the next one, we have interpolation of variables. But we have all this interpolation of functions. There are only four. The first one is very simple. We mentioned it before. It's a lookup. Lookup is going to perform a Hydra lookup through the hierarchy and get the value. Very simple. But we have three more. A scope is an, ad an alternative way to get the value of a variable. And it's, it's going to come from uh, mostly from Puppet or Hydra. And in generally, we can say that it's not uh, useful. It's useful in very specific case. For example, in, in, in the config team, we use it. But it's like an alternative way to just to get the value of a variable. The third function is literal. 
there are going to be cases that uh, you want to get, uh, you, you want to define a value that is going to have a form quite similar to, to an interpolation. It's, for example, a case of defining the server name for an Apache server. That is going to have a 20%, uh, a percent sign, and it's going to have the brackets. In those cases, we don't want to do an interpolation by mistake. So literal is as simple as that. It's going to allow us to specify a percent sign without interpolating. And it's exclusively a percent sign. You can put anything else inside. It's the only parameter allowed. And the last one is the alias. That, as the name says, is going to declare alias for variables that are already defined in the Hira YAML files. An example again will be this one. And the first of all is a lookup. In this case, we are getting the variable, the, the value for a, a module, specifically the public host name. So as you can see, it's an interpolation because it has the person sign and the brackets. The second example we are doing, we are using the scope, and we are showing actually how to do the same thing in different ways. In the first one, we are using just the fact uh, variable that we mentioned before. In the second one, we are using a the scope. They are similar. And the third example is uh, actually is the one that I mentioned, is server name. In this case, we probably could make a mistake if server name is defined somehow in the manifest. It will perform an interpolation, and we don't want it. We just want the literal. So this could be the way to do it. We are saying that uh, the, percent, the percent sign is going to be literal. We don't want to do anything else. And the last one is uh, an example of alias. We have a has, original, and we are declaring a new key just as an alias of this variable. So for the last part of this talk, we are going to, to mention what is module-level data. This is a concept that uh, probably you already know, and we can say that it is new for Hyra. It's coming in the last version of Hyra. And for understanding it a bit better, we are going to mention what are, the, what are the different layers that we were talking before. We mentioned the global layer. It's the one that is defined in the previous slides, and it's the one that we created. And it's on all the puppet masters, and you can see it also in the IDM machines. This is the one with more priority. It's going to, it's going to be the start point for a lookup. There is another level that uh, I think it was introduced in Hyda 4, probably. It's called environment layer, and it's not being used here because we have a hack. Uh, long ago, we decided that this is interesting. Actually, it's very interesting. So we include it in, in our global layer. So the first two is much for us. And the one that is introduced in, in Hyra 5 is module layer that we can also had it before, but now it's separated. The good point of this is going to allow us to define, like uh, Ignacio asked before, it's going to allow us to have different hierarchies. We're going to have the one that we implemented and the one that you can implement in your services. And for doing that, we are going to define a file, a Hyra YAML file like this one. This Hyra YAML file is going to be inside of what will be the code directory in your modules. If you remember, you have this data and code. Data is obsolete. It's the hack that we had. We want you to create a Hyra YAML file inside of your code directory. And the format for this file is going to be the one that you can see in the three last bullets. bullets. Uh, first, you have the version. You have to specify that this version 5. By default, it's going to be 3. You have to specify also the hierarchy. The hierarchy is going to be all the files where you are going to be able to find data for your module. And finally, you have to specify the default key that is going to say, for example, what um, backend you want to use, YAML, JSON, or where is going to be, where are going to be this information, where is going to be in these data files. So an example of this file will be this. And actually, this file, you can find it in the, in the NTP module. This will be a good example for look at. Again, you have the version. In this case, we are specifying that all our hierarchy files are going to be inside the data directory that is also inside of the code directory. We forget about the other directory that we had before. We want to use the built-in backend for YAML. And finally, we are defining a hierarchy with four elements, but as you can see, we are using interpolation, so it's going to allow us to do something more dynamic. 
which uh, we are using facts, for example, for getting the host name. So at the end, we are going to, fa to have different files. And inside of these files, not inside in this one, inside of the files defined in the hierarchy, we are going to find all the values that we want to set. This is a good place, for example, to define defaults for our classes. So instead of this famous params.pp that I think most of you have, you will put the data here in all the files defined in here. The last thing that we want to mention is that strategies are also possible here. And the way to define strategies is using the lookup options key. This key is going to be defined in any file of the hierarchy that we saw before, in any of them. And it's going to contain the behavior that we want to apply to lookups of a specific keys. We're going to set which keys you want to merge. And this is quite useful, for example, if you know that uh, your final user already wants to merge. It's going to probably want to merge the contents of a, of a key. So we set it by default. And the way it works is Puppet is going to come looking for a key. And before doing anything else, it's going to merge using has merge strategy all the values found for this key, or the lookup options key is going to be merged using has merge. Once it has this information, it's going to decide the merge behavior. That is the strategy that we define for a specific key. An example of this one will be this. Uh, we have two different files. Those are files that were defined in the hierarchy for the module and are inside of the data directory, code data. We forget about the data that we had before. And the first file common is defined in the lookup options key and is also defined in a default for NTP servers. Okay? This is the file where you are going to find actually the data. The second file is rel 7. This one has more priority because we define it in the hierarchy. And in both of them, we are defining the match behavior for different keys. In the first one, we have NTP servers that we want it to be matched in an unique, using a unique strategy. And we have also the possibility to use, to use regex expressions. So the last one is defining that any key that is called profile, something else, whatever thing, and users has to be matched using deep strategy. Uh, the file on the left is declaring the same variable using, again, regex expression. But we want to override it. We want to say, no, we want a has merge. As I mentioned before, uh, Puppet is going to come, and the first thing is getting all the values for lookups, and it's going to merge them using has merge. So the result of that has is the one that you can see in the bottom. The first one, the first variable, is going to be the same. It's not uh, replicated. The second one is going to get the one with more priority, and that's the one that is higher in the hierarchy. So that's, that will be our last slide. So this could be a summary. The summary is, understand a bit what is Hira. We have a hierarchy that is defined in the global layer by us. And it's how it works. Every time that you want to look for a key, it's going to follow these steps. The second thing is that we want you to use automatic lookup because it's cleaner. It's much cleaner, much easier. You don't have to remember the variable names that you have defined in the Hira file. It's going to be fully qualified. So it's, it's cleaner at the end. The third thing, you have different strategies. This is maybe quite new for someone, but it's quite useful to have uh, different data and just to collect them and match them. And the most important part for us is deprecated functions. As soon as you can, um, starting with has, uh, Hira has, get rid of it. OK, so this is uh, my last bit for today. So as I mentioned, this is a CCF. We are going to see you in October 12th. And now if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer. Oh, man, many thanks to David. <laughs> yes. So when are you planning to introduce uh, Hira 5? When is the exact date? Uh, Hira 5, you can already use it. OK. Yes, in the modules, you can already use it, yeah. Actually, we have modules already using Hira 5. OK, that's good. One good example is the training module. <laughs> yes. Do you? Yeah, uh, a few questions. On slide 14, Yes. you had an example for doing lookups. Yes. Uh, there, yes. 
uh, normally you would only use lookup if you want a different merge strategy, right? Uh, yes. And since first is the default one, then... Uh, yes, actually you have uh, different signatures for the function. And the first one is a simple one, you define the key. You have also the option that we mentioned here is to use the key and a has. Yeah. But also you can specify, for example, the key and a string containing uh, the validation, the, the type, or the key, the type, and the strategy. So you have different signatures. We, we will put here the more generic ones. I see. But having a backend port equals 80 would have been equivalent, because then you would have provided the default, and the merge strategy would have been first in any case. By default. Sorry, can you repeat? Just having backend port equals 80 instead of doing lookup backend port and default oh, yeah. value. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So there's a comment that you said you would only use lookup. Steve. You said you would only use lookup if you wanted to specify a merge strategy, but the point was you, you don't have to use lookup. You can specify the merge strategy. Yeah, with, without itself. having lookup. Okay. Yeah. Which, um, uh, something we mentioned yesterday, I mean, the advantage of doing that is that you, as soon as you use the lookup function, then you've, you've got a hard dependency on here, yeah. basically. So if you can avoid using the lookup function, and really there's no need to ever, ever use the lookup function. Yeah. There's no if you define it this way, you, um, sooner or later you have to touch the code, probably. If you define it in Hira, you're going to just care about Hira. And then I have a question on slide 20. 20. And, uh, this one. Yeah. How many of these uses are in uh, manifests done at CERN, so host groups, and how many are coming from modules, which are coming from upstream? You see, I'm sure I have my idea. I just uh, grab and I find all the uses. So um, this is something that uh, you should do is just go through your code and check. You say, this is one. OK. Because for common uh, shared modules which are coming from upstream, I guess yeah, uh, yeah, that you is will not, uh, take yeah, care of yeah, uh, updating yeah. them. Uh, and then uh, we have Hira 5 available here at CERN. How is it with upstream, with Puppet Forge and Fox Populi? Can we already start using it? Is everybody expected to have Hira yeah. 5? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. So, okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Okay. So the, the upstream maintainers will accept that if we start making use of it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Pablo had a question here. Still in slide number 20. Do you plan to provide something on the GitLab CI to detect if a module has these calls? Uh, there are no plans, actually. But it uh, will be, good, be good. Yes. We can do it. Actually, we have nothing now, but yes, why not? So. If no more questions, uh, at the end of the presentation, you have some links. Uh, oh, that was too much. <laughs> too much. At the end of the presentation, you have um, links to the official documentation. Um, OK, doesn't matter. And actually, you have a, a link to a talk from a guy that is quite um, is more interesting than me, is the, the developer of Hira, that is going to talk about more difference about Hira 3 and Hira 5. Okay, so thank you.